the scene on the start now we have the next heat of the Vi visitors challenge cup on the box station we have the german crew from bruder club alemania and on the buck station we have cambridge university Hello, Mark. Nice Good afternoon. To see you again. Yeah. All well? Very well, thank you. Very well. Good. Yeah. And thanks to Martin for the last uh, hour and more of uh, splendid narrative. As you say, we're going to see the Coxless Fours here. Alemania from Hamburg. And of course, in the world famous light blue Cambridge University. Four, which includes uh, two rowing blues. Substantial pedigree in both boats, actually. There's uh, an Olympian in the bow of the uh, Alemannia boat in Tobias Franzmann. They've been sitting there attached a long time. There's nothing more nerve-wracking. You always want to get on the start early. So you don't kind of flustered, but to sit there for that long. You know, and the last thing you want to do is look down the course. I, I spent a good while at the start yesterday, Mark, actually, and watched four, five, six, seven races go off. And, and it, it struck me, and I made the point at the time, that whilst we're, as it were, churning out race after race after race, we don't often get to appreciate these few minutes of intense concentration where relaxation morphs into absolute tension. Um, the, the mindset must be a very interesting thing, never mind the physiology of it all. Attention! Go! Finally, they are away with uh, Alemania on the front side and the, the recognisable livery of Cambridge University on the right-hand side as we look there, the, uh, out of the Bucks station and to Veering just marginally right to left, indeed, for a little while there, a little bit more than marginally. A straightening and change of direction required by the light blues, and indeed, an early warning. Yeah, that's a typical thing we see it so often in Cox's boats as they race along the island on the buck side. You know, the, the island kind of pushes you out into the crew on the opposite station. Um, and lo and behold, they've been warned by the umpire to get back on their station, but you've got to do that slowly rather than doing it erratically so you don't kind of slow the whole speed down. But now they're into their rhythm, you know, long, strong. You know, these guys, you know, have trained for the boat race. You know, some of them managed to race, compete in it, some didn't, and, you know, in the blue boat. So, you know, they've got the depth there, and they've been in the same program, run the same way for a long time now. And that is the depth of reputation that these Germans have to deal with. Not that they're short of experience themselves. I mentioned Tobias Franzman, the uh, bowman, Ninth place in the uh, Rio Olympics. Chan Tebel, the 25-year-old uh, in the two-seat, has been uh, a world champion. Christopher Wetterkamp in the three-seat and the stroke. Sven Ditzel, silver at the other 23 world championships in the uh, lightweight Coxless Wars in 2015. So they are themselves owners of uh, substantial rowing CVs. That's not the view they wanted to have at this stage of the race. No, it's exactly, you know, you've got two great coaches at Cambridge now. You've got Steve Stratmore's obviously in charge of the programme, and alongside him there is the former lightweight uh, Olympian and silver medalist uh, Richard Chambers. So I'm sure they'll be pleased with the way the guys got off the blocks there, got in front, and they're able to dictate the race. How early in a race of this nature? We're on Thursday now, Friday's getting close, Saturday beyond that. How how early in a race could these Cambridge boys be thinking about tomorrow? Or would that be dis dishonest of them this soon? Yeah, you, you never want to think too far ahead. You want to think about the race you're in. Going through, we'll use the term processes, you know, going through each process, making sure you're doing your job correctly, not thinking about tomorrow, because if you think about too far ahead, that's normally when you make mistakes. So. You know, the guys, I'm sure, as they're going down the track, they have this lead now, this cushion. They'll be thinking technical things, you know, what can we do better? Just making the little tweaks they go down the track. And tell me this, Mark, how pertinent is 
the boat race process that, as you mentioned, perhaps all of these have been through, how pertinent is that in a scenario like this where, where course management is somewhat different? Huge in form, but what's different with these guys is that Yusa and Cox be in charge of them and now they've asked to themselves be leaders in the boat. But they're used to this kind of dual racing with doing the boat race. Um, so they're kind of used to this type of racing, which, you know, not everybody is because most people are used to racing multi-lane racing um, across the kind of domestic and international regattas. And that's what makes Henley so unique. You come here and it's, you know, it's that, that gladiatorial kind of race, you know, boat, one boat against another boat. Of course, the great joy for them when they have uh, rowed from Putney to Mortlake is that the finish line comes up a whole lot sooner in this race. But... Uh, no doubt that is offset by the pace and what they ask of themselves earlier in the piece and what they ask of themselves early in this piece has left them in a position of substantial advantage very early and it looks as though it's going to be uh, a fairly gentle exercise for those in light blue this in the visitors challenge cup against a pedigree german four in truth who despite perhaps having had the mild advantage of uh, a steering problem a minor steering problem Cambridge had at the very start find themselves staring down the barrel of uh, a quite significant defeat here but that's something that the Cambridge crew after today's race they will talk about I'm sure you know how we make sure that doesn't happen tomorrow because as you mentioned as you go through the regatta the races are going to come fierce and fast and much closer and the last thing you want to do is be making alterations as you go up the blocks and there's closer races later in the regatta so that's time for the coaches kind of li liaise with the athletes and see how they can work on that and make sure that's better when they go out tomorrow how do you establish since we've got time to discuss it how, how do you establish the steering dynamic in a, in a constant score i see for instance that uh, alexander malawani in, in the two seat is steering for cambridge for uh, alemania it's the man in the stroke seat how do you come by these decisions it's normally whoever's confident because the last thing you want to have is worrying about steering if someone's not comfortable doing it you do not want to give them the, uh, the foot plate for steering because if they're worried about that they're not going to be run efficiently and that's when things go wrong so normally it's someone who's comfortable doing it and to be honest you know it's always you know you always look it's easier to do it from the stroke seat because you can look back but if someone's comfortable doing it in the two or three seat or the bow seat than you give them because you know they're not going to worry about it it's just part of who they are as an athlete and they understand what they need to do is it is it a simple thing to do uh, in terms of the the basic practicalities of it well i think the earlier you learn how to do it the better it's like anything you know if you don't ever do it as a youngster then as soon as you're given it as an hour you're worried about making a mistake where you know as a kid i was taught to steal my foot so i was comfortable doing it, it just became one of those things that you naturally do it's like asking a pianist whether he could play the organ, you know, suddenly you've got to deal with the pedal as well as the keyboard. But steering since the first 10 or 15 metres here has not really been an issue. There has been uh, no sense at any stage really that either of these would intrude on each other's water. Cambridge have the middle of the stream now and... Uh, they don't have a care in the world. They will look forward to a Friday at the Henley Regatta, as perhaps you would in advance have anticipated they might. That's the progress board. And Cambridge's progress is up in lights and evident for all. Left behind Alemania and a pretty early stage of the race to go forward to Friday at Henley 2017. Four, five, maybe six strokes still remaining in the Germans race once Cambridge had crossed the line and begun their three cheers.